for the past four years, I, I, I think I always come back to Stanford. Um, and uh, Jack McDonough, one of my uh, uh, professors back at GSB, asked me to uh, come back and talk about internet and the startups and sometimes about investment for the past four years. And this year is the first year I, I uh, haven't made it to his class. So I decided to come back here uh, to, to uh, do the similar, the same thing. Um, when I was preparing for this uh, uh, keynote, I realized that roughly about 11 years ago, I was back at GSB on the same uh, podium with Jack Ma. So I was thinking, I was in the bubble dice of uh, the Dakan days, and uh, I was thinking, hmm, hopefully this time we're not at peak of another internet bubble. <laughs> but <clears throat> today I want to talk about uh, the Renren story and, and, uh, and we'll talk about the, how we innovate at the, what we call the bleeding edge of Solomo. And Solomo is coined by um, John Daw and his partner, Murray Meeker, when she was still working at Morgan Stanley. I think she came out with an internet report every year, which a lot of people read. And, and ever since that, they invented this word that uh, has been widely used by, by the startup guys in the industry. I mean social, local, and mobile. I want to talk about social first. So what is social? I, I, a lot of people here use Facebook, Twitter, and a lot of you probably use Reddit as well if you're back in China. And the social has really been around for a long time. <clears throat> I remember back in 99 when I started my first startup, China Ren, it was actually a first generation social network with real names. Except back in those days, there were no photographs. And it's very difficult to take digital photos and, and upload. So we really call it nowadays, the, at that time, was the Facebook without face. And so social network has been around for a long time, at least, uh, you know, since 99. And, and now it, they have transformed industry uh, to a certain extent that it's almost becoming as big, which I would probably say potentially bigger than search. It's really um, one-dimensional ways of organizing the entire internet and the user behavior on the internet based on uh, personal relationships and a person as, 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 as the organizing center versus search is trying to organize the entire internet based on keywords. So these are the two very important transportation infrastructure for the entire internet and everybody, everybody else simply right on top of it. So social as we will talk later, is really uh, providing one additional way of transporting activities, users over the internet using the social graph. And that's a fundamental innovation. We believe that social probably is one of the most important product DNAs ever invented on the internet. And there will be continuous new innovations, but I think fundamental innovations like these probably will be very hard to come by. And I'll talk about social, the impl implication of that. But before I, I want to talk a little bit about Ren Ren. And, um, and ever since 1999, uh, the social um, has uh, moved, has, has, has uh, swept China and spawned a lot of little companies and services in a lot of, uh, a lot of different vertical sectors. You will see that Ren Ren showed up on quite a few places here because we, we are in different segments of the social. And I'll give you a few stacks for some of you who are interested in China internet, is that the, the user base now is close to um, half a billion, 500 uh, million users. And of those 500 million users, there, there are about 300 million users who have used a blog. And that's very large compared with uh, US. And roughly about 200 million people have used um, a Twitter-like service called Weibo in Chinese. And there's about 220 million users who have used social network. And Renren has about 130 million activated user base in China out of that 220. Hmm. So I want to talk a little bit how how we do social networking in China. 
And as some of you might know, that uh, the China Internet environment is, is very different from here in the U.S. in the sense that the, the user segments are mostly uh, young, and, and a lot of them live in second tier and third tier cities. And, um, and they demand a lot of uh, individual, um, individual uh, attention to, to, to personalization to the internet services they have. So this is the first thing we did. We, we allow users on a paying basis to customize their pages. We also give them different means to, you know, to beautify the page, such as uh, personalizing the pointer, the cursor, as well as picking different skins. And we, we even have a, a partnership with Disney to, to sell value-added service based on Disney characters. <clears throat> and another example is the Renren desktop. Um, desktop is something you know that the desktop applications in China is extremely important. The most valuable, um, in terms of market cap, internet company in China is called Tencent QQ. It's essentially a desktop software company uh, with a QQ Instant Messenger as the flagship for the entire suites of internet services. And also, one of the largest revenue categories is internet games, also is based on desktops, PCs. So we, we have developed a uh, real desktop, which is really a desktop software that's internet connected. That does two things. One is that it allows users to view their uh, uh, to view their news feed in real time and allow them to reply to it in real time, also allowing them to chat. Uh, this product is widely used by our uh, active users, particularly those users um, on college campus. And this is uh, some user session. And many of you know that uh, China has traditionally been an uh, agriculture-based country for the past few thousand years. And so it's probably not surprising that the first farming game was launched on Renren in China, even before Farmville was uh, launched here. This game uh, is called Happy Farming. It was so successful in 2008 and 2009 that it created a sensation uh, in China. Um, um, for some reason, they invented a, a game mechanic that's very, very unique. It's called Stealing Vegetables. That became very popular. I mean, in U.S., there's, uh, on Facebook, there's a poke, right? But in China, people are not used to poking each other. But they like stealing vegetables. <laughs> so in 2009, the, this game was so hot that you have fairy tales of grandma getting up in the morning at 3 o'clock, harvesting their vegetables, and then stealing their neighbor's vegetables online. And, and so that's another Chinese characteristic of, of the internet, how it develops. And showing you another example in, in, in the field of a social content. Uh, this is a vertical social Q&A that we launched a long, long ago. It's the first, was first automobile social Q&A. It allow user to ask any questions related to the car, and we promise them to promised to answer the question within 24 hours by a real expert as verified. So uh, this is our answer to um, social content. We think that because before social networking came to age, most of the web services, websites, as content-based, optimized themselves for search engine. But nowadays, increasingly, social networks drive increasing amount of traffic to these sites. So we're seeing that you know, the, these web services need to fundamentally change the product DNA. So they both work with search engine as well as working with um, social networks. So this is one example of a very well um, built product that, 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 that catered to how social networks would like the content side to work. And a lot of people debated about open versus close integrated approach versus distributed approach. For example, back in the PC era, Microsoft succeeded by dominating the software layer and, 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 and opening up the, the hardware layer to everybody else to participate. And they took the market away from the integrated approach of Apple. 
But in the post PC era, the same approach of integrated services uh, pioneered by Apple went over Microsoft. So we are experimenting different approaches of, of open and integrated um, you know, to, to serve consumers the best. For example, in the areas of social gaming, we're totally open. But this is one example that we offer a highly integrated, closed uh, music service for the one simple reason. We want to work with third parties to provide music services to your users. But nobody could afford copyrighted content. Nobody could afford that. Because if you cannot guarantee a minimum amount of distribution, you're not going to spend a lot of money buying the copyrights. So we went ahead, we bought the entire available uh, copyrights, and we start offer integrated social music to our user base. And I believe this is most likely what Facebook will end up doing. But we are doing that first. And this is one example of random radio where uh, you can listen to radio with your friends and sharing your music taste. I'm going to give you another um, example of what we call social content. Not long ago, we launched Ren Ren Xiao Zhan, which is really um, what we call light blog, which is very similar to Tumblr here. It allows a user to publish social content to a highly customized, very simple uh, interface that can be subscribed by anybody on Ren Ren. So we, after we opened up the service, it instantly became number one in China because we have so many users who, are, who have special interest you know, who want to share their expertise and interest with, with the entire user base of Green Room, in addition of maintaining uh, a closed uh, personal profile on Green Room. And finally, I want to talk a little bit on the Green Room part about how we monetize and why it's different from other social networks in the world. Um, last year, majority of revenue of our revenue came from gaming. I already know that, uh, let's say on Facebook, most of the revenue came from advertising. Uh, well, similar to that in the sense that a larger part of Facebook advertising actually comes from social gaming vendors that try to prom promote their services on Facebook. So we're similar in that. But what's different is that nowadays we're deriving more than half of revenue uh, from brand advertisers. These are brand advertisers who want to bond with our user base and then build a brand on Ren Ren. And so far, we have worked close to 1,000 advertisers in China. This includes some of the biggest multinationals and local brands. And I predict that even now, uh, we are mostly in advertising. I predict that three years later, more than half of revenue will be coming from e-commerce. Now, let me move to the second dimension of Sonoma, which is local. For us, for many people, local means different things. But for us, it means two things. One, it means location. The other means local commerce, or you can generalize that as e-commerce. So last year, recognizing the, the mega trend of, of commerce, e-commerce becoming social, we launched a social uh, buying, group buying service called Nuomi which in Chinese means sticky rice. And it became a runway success that I will talk about later. And in addition to offering group buying, we also offer uh, local coupons. Imagine using a Ren Ren um, uh, phone product, and, and you'll be s browsing these coupons and group deals based on a map. And you can take instant actions based on how close you are and how hungry you are, for example, at 12 o'clock, we're primarily showing uh, you know, ramen shops within five minute walking distance from where you are, as long as you are moving. And how we integrate is the commerce with social network, of course, is by news feed. When a user buys uh, a group buy purchase or clicked on a coupon and liked it, it will automatically send uh, the news feed out. And when the friends see it, they will click on it and take action on it, and it become viral. And let me show you how this viral effect can create commercial miracles. 
This is the first deal ever on Luomi when we launched it in June last year. Uh, it's, it's a movie theater in suburban Beijing with multiple screens and built by the famed um, movie star Jackie Chan. It's called Jackie Chan Theater uh, out of Wukesung, Beijing. And, and because those theaters are so far away that even the owner tries to lure the users, uh, the consumers, by promising uh, a free Mercedes ride, they still couldn't fill the screens, um, the theaters, for, for like years. And then on that day, they decided to you know, give it a try with us, even though we're brand new, we, we had no brand. But we only had one thing, we had, we had news feed uh, integration with Ren Ren. So within the first 12 hours launching the deal, starting from the midnight, by noon, we have sold 70,000 tickets on Ren Ren alone. So we're basically um, selling only to the or user base in Beijing, because uh, remember, that's only for one movie theater. And these white collar workers were so happy with that deal, because that, that, that deal came a very deep discount, typically sold for $20 plus for two tickets, but we were selling that at, at uh, $6, $7 for two person, plus the ice cream and popcorn too. So these consumers are so happy, they go out to lunch and talk about it. And talking about the second propagation of viral, right? So, so their colleagues, you know, once hearing upon that, decide to also participate. So after lunch, we sold another 230,000 for a total of 300,000 tickets for one movie theater in one day with no advertising. That's the power of commerce, coupled with social network. And lastly, I want to talk about the mobile aspect of Solomo. And for us, mobile is really uh, a fusion between social and local, right? Because mobile device is a competing device that both offers mobility as well as uniquely the locational information. But in order to do well on mobile and, and, and take full advantage of the locational information that it has to offer, that's another advantage a real name-based social network can offer is that people feel much more comfortable sharing their location with their true friends. And that's one of the reasons Ren Ren is the number one location-based service provider in China. And our usage has shoot off the chart ever since we launched it. And so far, our competitors still hasn't launched that service, probably intimidating by the advanced features that we offer. We're also the first social network in the world to offer, to allow our users to combine the UGCs they created on a mobile phone with the location. So instead of doing a very simple checking service, we allow users to update their status at a certain location and share that. So that's, that's like generating a sentence, not just with you know, uh, a, key, a, key men, a key sentence, but also with some descriptions attached to it. We also allow users to, to upload a picture with a comment, with a locational service, with the location information, and share it with their friends. And that's the power of real name-based social network, and also the power of the integrated nature of our services. If this location-based service is, 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 is provided by a third party, then it's very difficult to integrate that kind of service. For instance, if you click and use our mobile service, and you click the, um, you know, the location-based buttons, and you get the, all the nearby deals going on and, and where your friends are nearby, so on and so forth. So I want to show how powerful it can be with lo com combining social, local, and mobile. This is a real case. We, um, we offered a location-based service integrated campaign for MasterCon, which is a leading uh, which is a leading 
uh, instant noodle and uh, drink brand in China. In one of the city, um, second tier city called Hefei, it's a college town. And when users log in onto their mobile phone in that city, or even entire China, they will be able to participate in these events. If you're outside the city, you can participate uh, online uh, on the PC, or if you're there, you can go to the store and check in. And this campaign brought in 6,000 new consumers into the store to try out their drinks in one city. And that's probably the first time in the world, uh, experiment, at least in China, an experiment like this happens. Mobile commerce really generates brand new marketing opportunities for businesses and the commerces. And this shows how viral it can be. And finally, some concluding remark. The reason I use bleeding, I wanted to use cutting edge, right? But some of you might know the internet industry is so competitive in China. I decided to use bleeding. <laughs> so what is it about? About Solomo. First of all, we think that mobile will change everything. It's a new computing platform with importance that's even uh, probably higher importance than the, the, the invention of PC. Remember, every time when there's a computing platform shift, fortunes change hands. Fortunes were destroyed and created. Old company, big company got destroyed and new company erupted. We think there's going to be huge creation and destruction of wealth in the, in the TMT sector in the next five years. And we've probably already seen some of those, right? We have seen, uh, we have heard the news of many companies decide to sell themselves or spin off their PC divisions or selling themselves entirely to Google. Remember, these are companies just five years ago was almost looking invincible. So we think that this, the entire TMD space will be transformed because the newer generation of leaders such as Apple, Google, Facebook, they're so innovative and, and they're taking such a dramatic business approach uh, that I think that the new round of battle will be very, very fierce. But for consumers, it's a great show because we benefit. We all benefit from the intense competition of these highly innovative, very humongous companies. And all major internet services will be transformed. I, show, I have shown some of the services, for such as example, Chewin.com, AskCost.com, right, which is entirely social, right? It's not very searching your friendly. It doesn't allow searching your search. We decide to just let it fully integrate with Renren and only take advantage of social network. Of the four categories of services online, commerce, entertainment, that means gaming and video, content, and the communication. Search historically only affected two, which is content. Search fundamentally transformed content business and became a kimping in content. It also helped facilitate the rise of e-commerce because search helped e-commerce to derive demands and, and generate leads. But if you look at social, social is one category, it's, it's, it's such a fundamental infrastructure that it transforms almost all the categories of the four, right? You look at social by itself is communication. It transformed communication, it displaced email. It's displacing email, instant messenger, and these first generation communication services and becoming bigger. And it's transforming the content distribution. Because I use it almost every day, I found myself no longer using news portals. Because I got a lot of news on Rarin already. My friends share those news. If it matters to them, it matters to me. And I found myself using less of search as well, particularly on mobile phone. I seldom search on mobile. I don't feel the need. Because just by accessing Renren, I get most of the content I feel like I need it. 
And gaming is another area that's transformed. Right? We, you know, we saw the rise of Zynga and, and Playfish and these companies. They started from zero to multi-billion dollar value in a matter of one or two years. The same amount of, you know, it's the same amount of value that took EA and Vivendi decades of time to build. So with the rise of social and, and the cutting edge competition of these highly innovative companies, we think that our life will be, will be fundamentally changed. The whole world will be closer, connected. The commerce, entertainment, content, communication will be permanently shaped, transformed into better and better services that's more accessible, providing more value to consumers. And Renren being a key player in the Solomo and the social revolution in China. We feel privileged. In the meantime, we feel we're standing at, at the bleeding, bleeding edge because of competition and because of innovation. But we're, we're very confident that with the continuous innovation and, and, and the tireless effort, one day we're going to build we're going to build um, a services that will serve every Chinese in any way they can imagine. It. And thank you. You can find me on Ren Ren by searching my name, Joe. <laughs> and yeah, um, I would like to answer any question that you might have. Microphones here in the aisle, please, and identify yourself. There's a microphone there. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I, I was working in a, a search engine company in China, and uh, I was asking to you a uh, question about the, how do you think about the future competition between the search engine and the social networking? Because the <coughs> in the previous age, there's an uh, age of search, such Google and Baidu in China. And then now the social <coughs> come up, and uh, there is a fierce competition between Facebook and Google in the U.S. And how do you think about Baidu and Renren uh, <coughs> in China competition? Thank you. That's a very good question. I think I alluded to some of that in my speech, but uh, I think that's a very good question. I think the old school thinking about how social networks compete with search was very traditional. They say, oh, they worry about Facebook or Renren creating uh, a search, a social search, or the way to compete with them for search engine is to create social search on a search platform. But that was deadly wrong. Because the way that social network compete with search is not through search. It's through newsfeed. Newsfeed is the main way, is, is the main mechanism for social network to transport content and information. And the search, I mean, the search action is the main way for, for search to work, right? So therefore, the way to compete is, is really social network created an alternative way for people to obtain information that's relevant for them. It indirectly reduces the number of queries on search because people already sort of found out what they want to know. But more, more, more importantly, they indirectly um, reduce the consumption on other forms of media, including news portals. I mean, that, that's, that's why Yahoo nowadays is entering a difficult time because their main portal business is being hurt. And the, mail, the email business, which used to be the anchoring asset for Yahoo, is now impacted by Facebook too. So, so that's when I think about it. I, I, I always think that, the, you know, if one day Facebook ex exceeded Google or Ren Ren exceeded Baidu, it's not, it's not only because we came up with a way to search. It's only because that our user base has grown so big and they consume a bigger percentage of their daily content including what we call absolute content, the content that's not generated by their friends, but the content generated by, not by their friends, but by some publishers 
once they have, once you reach that critical mass, the usage of, 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 of search will drop. And, and that, that's, that's really how the, the competition plays out. Next question. Yeah. Joe, uh, just from your presentation, I saw a lot of like applications actually are owned or partially owned by Renren. Uh, that's quite different in U.S. Um, because we see like um, uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook are quite open and uh, purely open uh, platform. So they open the interface to integrate the third party applications more than um, the platform in China. So why um, you think, I mean, China social network platform <coughs> choose a different approach in terms of this like um, uh, strategy for third party applications? Thank you. What a good question. I, I think there's no right or wrong. Um, I think the same example plays out here in the US. I use the example of Microsoft versus versus Apple. Um, Apple took an uh, integrated close approach, but managed to offer unparalleled user experience by integrating, by optimizing across different stacks, and by making the, making the technical compromises and, 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 and to, 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 make, uh, to deliver an integrated high performance to consumers. And in all case, we are, well, philosophy is always open. We only do those verticals such as music that, that no third parties can do well. And another example would be location-based service. Um, no third parties can do really well unless you're putting a lot of money. And of course, most of the third party companies doesn't have a lot of financial resources. So unless they see something, they can guarantee the success. They're not going to throw in the financial resources, the engineering resources to do it. So for us, we decided to focus on a very few verticals where it's very difficult and impossible for third parties to do, but we opened up the rest of the platform for everybody to participate, such as gaming, such as all the vertical applications, including, uh, including the file sharing, including um, you know, a whole bunch of other services. So, so we think that um, there's, there's no right or wrong with open or close. Uh, What's absolute right around is all about consumers. We we'll do whatever consumer demands, and we we'll do our best to deliver the best services available for them, uh, being closed or open. Yes. Hey, Joe. So this is Xin Xin. I'm also a Stanford alumni and a very royal um, user of Ren Ren Thank since you. 2005. <laughs> Um, so I want to ask more about the uh, user expanding strategy outside of the college student. Because from my own experience, like um, both on Renren Ren and uh, Facebook, I just noticed these days, um, when I log in Renren, Ren, I'm still talking to my college alumni, and it's really just about photo sharing, daily news, and even games sometimes. And Facebook is just expanding far more beyond that. And I was very successful in terms of persuading my boss, um, and also uh, lots of senior people to, to join Facebook. But it's very hard to persuade even like my mom to use Ren Ren, because she was like, you can just send me photos through QQ. So I, I know we have just changed the name from Xiao Nei to Ren Ren, and just want to learn more about the strategy around that. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I think in China, right, when, in your particular case, I guess that's probably because you have moved to states and you developed most of your white collar relationship here in the states uh, where you kept your college buddies in China. So that's your case is probably a little bit unique. But in China, uh, or, or, you know, or about half of the user base is still uh, college kids. And then uh, maybe 10 percent high school and the rest of them are white collar. Uh, we, uh, we are worried, you know, our penetration rate in white collar market is still very small. So that's where we see most of the growth is going to come from. And the way we do that, the way we increase our penetration white collar, I think that, uh, I mean, stem from one mission, which is really offering the communication service really well. Because if we look at our core offerings, right, it's, it's, it's the, 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 the core for Ren Ren is communication. Uh, photo sharing is communication, sharing an article is communication, and talking to each other is communication, and sending a photo is communication. So anything that's related to communication, we want to do it really, really well. 
And so far, because we're such a young company, so compared with other companies that's been around for like 10, 15 years, our number of engineers are like 10% of theirs. So, so I think that we're going to continue to invest in engineering forces and hiring the best talents and, and leverage on those talents to build the best next generation communication services because we think communication is key. We think that um, for white collar in China, that they, it's a little bit different from here in the US where, where uh, typically a white collar worker, the uh, young graduate, go to a big city, the salary is not that high, and, and they, they are, they, you know, their status, their, their, their sense of insecurity is much bigger than typical their counterparts in the US. So we need to help them do that too, which means help them to deal with uh, you know, job changes and, and as well as uh, finding them fi uh, helping them finding the best deal to get the biggest bang for the buck because their salary cannot cope with the inflation in the big cities. So we need to find a value for them and, and also increase the, the value of their communication time spent on Renren, basically helping them to do well in offline life, but also giving them more value for the every hour of time spent on Renren. So that's the general strategy. Next one. Yeah, this gentleman. Uh, I'm TK Chu, a visitor. I have two questions. The first one, it's... Um, Referring to Professor Duncan said, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the, some of the internet services is struggled in China, and I think that's probably more true for some of American uh, companies who are trying to establish a foothold in there. They are struggling more than Chinese. Um, so the question is, what is this really the root? Uh, problem of the struggling, especially for American companies. And my second question is in some way related to this. That's also what Professor Duncan referred to. Yesterday there was a big sell-off of all the Chinese internet service. The triggering was, at least if you read the paper, says that Justice Department is going to open investigation of these Chinese internet services. Now, why did the, the the Chinese internet services are so vulnerable to this factual or rumored things. Uh, are the two questions related? Why Americans find so hard to survive and uh, in some way that the American now view the Chinese company with some kind of suspicion? Interesting question. Um, I think I think that the, uh, for your first question, um, how international companies uh, do um, in China, I think that um, my observation is that the traditional multinational companies do extremely well in China. Uh, these companies include, uh, you know, KFC. Uh, KFC is one of the biggest chain, uh, you know, restaurants in China. They do so well, even though fried chicken is not a traditional part of uh, Chinese diet. Uh, now they're all changed. Um, and uh, I remember Caterpillar owns a huge building in Beijing, uh, right next to Microsoft. So these traditional uh, multinational companies are doing extremely well in China um, uh, relative to the technology companies. Well, I think the answer for that is twofold. Uh, one of them is probably related to your second question. The first uh, reason probably has something to do with the fact that I mentioned earlier, which is in our industry, we are going through a platform change. We're going through the post-PC era into mobile computing era. And during this transition, nobody has an easy life, including Apple, even though they are leading, right? They cannot afford to slow down a little bit. So I think that, that the reason that technology companies tend not to do well as well as their uh, traditional counterparts is probably has something to do with the fundamental changes. Th they have to deal with glo globalization, globalization, but a more important issue is really how do they deal with technology transformation. And a, a second reason is, is, is uh, has something to do with, with the, um, the regulatory view that, that Internet is, 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 is more like related to media 
versus the technology, right? So in the, in the, in the regulator's view, uh, we are more like a media company. We, we, so we should be regulated as, as a media company. And, and, and media company uh, mostly uh, state controlled in China. So, so that's why when, when Sina went public, uh, more than 10 years ago, they invented a legal structure called VIE, variable interest, um, um, you know, equity, uh, you know, entities, to to basically um, um, to to have a legal uh, framework allowing them to be listed in the U.S. And now, more than 10 years later, this came to question again. I, I think you guys should ask Jack Ma about that um, if he's here. I heard he's coming here, um, so so I'm not an expert on that, but but I guess Jack is uh, single-handedly, uh, uh, you know, uh, calling the attention to this issue. So 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 uh, recently, the market has been very brutal for uh, Chinese internet companies. Um, some of them went down 18% in one day, uh, but you know we're not worried. We announced a stock buyback uh, yesterday. Um, and uh, we, we're here for the long term. We think any ambiguities will be uh, cleared out sooner or later. And, and the most important thing is that is to focus on innovation and, 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 and uh, you know, and, and think about how to position yourself and, and keep on innovating and grow the company. So if you, as long as you do that and taking care of the fundamentals, these, um, you know, these market turmoils tend to uh, work themselves out because um, it's really difficult to make uh, a wave that shouldn't be there for the long term. I mean, the, at the end of the day, I would say the market, uh, the market is uh, is uh, a, a voting machine in the short term, but it's a, it's a, it's a waiting machine in the long term. So I think my time is up, and thank you very much to be here. Uh, my pleasure to be here too. Thank you.